Hi everyone, my name is Philip and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to continue our series on Bitcoin wallets. The next wallet we're going to look at is Electrum and once we reviewed it, we're going to rank it on the Bitcoin wallet leaderboard. To get Electrum, go to electrum.org, click on download and you can see it's available for Linux, Windows, Mac OS and Android. It is also a Python version. Of note, it's not available for Apple iPhone or iPad. For Windows, the standalone executable is a single file you can download and run. It stores the data on your local hard drive. The portable version is similar in that it's a single file to download, but it also stores the data next to that file. As a result, you can run it off and store it on USB drives or anything that's portable. The Windows installer is a standalone Windows installer, so it'll show up like every other program and add remove programs. We're going to download and use the standard version. Double click on the installer and like most Windows installers it's going to ask you where you want to install it. When I test out wallets I like to use Bitcoin's testnet that lets you use test Bitcoin so you can try out all the features without any cost. To do this for Electrum you go right click on properties and on the end of the target you put minus minus testnet. It's really important never to send real Bitcoin from Bitcoin's main net to a testnet address or you will lose the Bitcoin. So you either use testnet do everything you want to do, then delete it and change it back to using the main net. Now let's start Electrum running. Our first choice is what server do we want to connect to. Let's pretend we want to connect to a server manually first. Here we see we've got an option of letting it choose a server for us, or we could untick it and we could put in our own server if we wanted to. It also gives us a selection of other testnet servers. If you're not on testnet, you'll be seeing real blockchain nodes. Okay, let's go back to the previous screen. So most people will be selecting auto connect. Now you get to choose the name of your wallet. I'm gonna call mine test wallets. We'll be creating a standard wallet, but let's just briefly look at the other options. If you have an existing wallet with another program, you can select input Bitcoin address or private keys. From here, you can import your private key. Make sure you use a private key, otherwise you'll end up creating a watch only wallet, which means you can, you'll be able to deposit funds, but you'll never be able to transfer funds out of your wallet. All right, let's go back and look at one of the other options. A multi-sig wallet requires multiple signatories. For example, you could have three people and require two of them to authorize a transaction. Electrum has quite a nice interface for setting up multi-sig wallets. So here you can see how many people have signing rights and how many are required to sign. So this currently says there's two people who can sign and two people are required, but you could say there could be three people who can sign and two signatures are required or even one signature. And you can do any combination that the sliders will allow you to. There is a third party company that allows you to use MFA with the Electrum wallet and you have to pay a fraction of your transactions as a fee when you use this service. Now onto creating a standard wallet. If you've created a wallet somewhere else and you have a BIP39 seed or you had an Electrum wallet previously and you have the seed phrase, you can select I already have a seed. It's important to note although that Electrum creates seed phrases, they're not BIP39 seeds. So you cannot take an Electrum seed phrase and go to another wallet and enter that as a BIP39 seed phrase, it will fail. So there is the portability is not good in this area. If you are going to enter a seed phrase, you select that option and under options, you can select that it's an Electrum seed phrase or a BIP39 seed phrase. Let's go back and look at some of the other options. I'm not going to dive into it here, but a master key is when you have hierarchical wallets. So a wallet that also has child wallets. I'm not going to cover it off here, but Electrum also has the support for a lot of hardware wallets like Ledger, Trezor, Bitbox. There's a lot and the list keeps growing. So let's head back and just create a standard wallet with a new seed. This is a testnet seed and this wallet will be deleted afterwards. So I don't care if everyone sees this, but this is very confidential. You should never share your seed on mainnet. This is your password if anyone gets the, your seed they'll be able to spend or take over your bitcoin make sure you back up your seed phrase somewhere safe like on a piece of paper and store it somewhere that no one else will get it this is the only way to recover your wallet if you lose your wallet and your seed phrase any bitcoin you have in it are gone forever it cannot be recovered or restored let's carry on remember that seed phrase you just backed up well now you have to enter it again make sure your backup copy is good now you get to select a password that'll be used to encrypt the wallet if you're using the windows installer electrum will ask you if you wish to be notified of new versions note the standalone and the portable versions can't do this and if you're using testnet mode like me you'll be warned that testnet coins are worthless it's just simply for testing or playing with the wallet to try out functions without having to risk using real bitcoin let's get some test bitcoin on testnet so we can finally start having a play let's go over to the receive tab we're going to request our test bitcoin from 
bitcoinforcet.eu. We're not going to request a particular amount or an expiry date, and we'll just simply create the request. You can click on the Bitcoin URI button here to flip between different formats. So this is a URI you can send somebody to request a specific amount. There's just your standard address. We'll grab that because we're going to need to do a payment to it shortly. And it also supports Lightning. Also click on this button to generate a QR code someone else, so someone else can scan it to give you funds. And there's quite a few options just hiding over on this menu here as well to do with Lightning. When you're on the address, all you've got to do is just simply left click it once and it'll automatically copy it to the clipboard. Okay, let's head over to coinforcet.eu. We're going to say we're running Bitcoin testnet. We're going to put in our testnet address we got just before and request some test Bitcoin from them. Coinforcet has now said it sent these test BTC to us. Now with human using Coinforcet or uh, other faucets, uh, consider good manners to send back the test funds when you're no longer using them. So just grab a copy of the address and that's where you send it back to when you're done with it. Note that test it can be quite slow sometimes so be prepared to wait half an hour or so for the Bitcoin to come through. While we're waiting for the payment to come through let's take a look at some other features. Under view let's have a look at addresses. This shows all the addresses belong to the wallet and the transactions received against each one. Looks like it's showing the transactions we've received. Candles is for lightning we'll come back and have a look at that. Contacts lets us add favorite addresses. Let's add one for CoinForcet. And then we'll use this later on for returning the funds. And lastly, there is the console. Under the hood, Electrum was written in Python, and this gives you access to the Python console. Don't accept advice from people to enter commands into the console. Uh, they may be trying to steal your Bitcoin. Let's take a look through the tools menu. First up, there's preferences. We'll just quickly go through each tab. You can see this controls the appearance of it. Language, units, do you want to see things in Satoshis or BTC? How many decimal points? Information about Lightning, Fiat, do you want to see a particular currency displayed? Where to get that currency data? Lightning, a couple of options here. And lastly, miscellaneous. There's the help menu. Won't particularly check go through this, but you can check for updates or get more information. Let's go through wallet. First of all, we can look at information about the wallet. You can use wallet password to change your password. If somehow you've managed to lose your seed phrase, you can go wallet seed, type in your password, and you'll get to see what the seed phrase was originally. Under private keys, you can select sweep. I don't know what that does. Export lets you export the keys. I'm not quite sure what the labels pertain to in Electrum, but there's an option to import, export them. And there seems to be some kind of find function, but when you right select it, it doesn't seem to do anything. On the file menu, there's an option to open up other wallets that you've had open recently. You can use open to open a specific wallet. New restore is like the original wizard we went through in creating a new wallet. And save backup saves a backup. Delete's fairly obvious. It deletes the wallet and quit quits out of Electrum. I just noticed that wallet find turns on this little panel down here and that lets you search whatever panel you've currently got open. There's some shortcuts to the menu down here as well. This one lets you change your password. This one takes you to preferences and this option shows you your seed phrase. This last one shows you the status of the node that you are connected to. Our test Bitcoin is turned up. I can see it in the history tab and if I double click on it I can see lots of information about the transaction. Let's do a payment to CoinForcet. So if I go to the contacts tab I notice I can go right click and pay to. If someone wasn't in your contacts you could also paste in their address here. That's a paste button. There's also an option here to scan a QR code or to read a URI or a Bitcoin invoice from a file. There's another option you can use here if you want to load multiple payments into a single transaction. Pay to many. This option you put in the address and then the denomination you want to pay and then you keep putting in more addresses I'm just going to use the same one and you can see it loads it up all to go in one transaction let's carry on loading this up we'll just call this test transaction and we'll pay 1000 sats to CoinForcet we can also tell it to pay our entire wallet if you click on save it'll save that transaction and you can load up a whole bunch of ones here and then you can come down and from here click on pay or to copy that transaction again but for the moment we'll just carry on and do a simple transaction from here we get some guidance to help calculate the fee so initially it starts off with ETA so you can choose whether you want to paid in more blocks which reduces the fee or less blocks also options for static where you can set the fee yourself or you can choose yourself to directly look into the mempool. There is an option here where you can preview the transaction. It shows you lots of information. There's options here for merging signatures, joining outputs. You can share the transaction, sign, I'm not sure, but I assume that's for multi-sig wallets. From here, we're just gonna simply select okay. We're gonna enter our password to allow the transaction. 
and now the payment is on its way to be sent. Currently it's in the mempool and unconfirmed. If we come across to history, we can see our test transaction waiting there. We can do a right click, we can look at information about it, copy it. We can increase the fee to make the transaction go through quicker. So let's say we want it to go through within two blocks. Uh, all right, looks like I had it quite a short period already. So we'll have to go static and we'll say okay. And we'll put our password in again. So that's using the replace by fee mechanism. Electrum also supports child pays for parent fee rate changes. So let's have a go at doing that. So we'll double click on it. We need to have a transaction that has a yellow to show that it's available. So we'll just copy this. Now we'll go across to our addresses tab and we're going to search for that yellow entry. Here it is right here. Now we'll right click and we're going to add this to coin control. From our addresses tab, we'll copy the address of that transaction. Go to send and we'll paste that into there. Put in the same thousand Satoshis and go pay. We'll move the fee target all the way to the right. And now we'll select to spend only confirmed coins. And now we can say okay. So that provides two methods for doing fee bumps using Electrum. Fee bumps are something you might need to do if you have a transaction that's stuck in the mempool or it's uh, you need it to go through much quicker than you initially thought you might need. Electrum also supports coin join for privacy. I'm not going to go through the whole process, but basically once you're loading a transaction, you can save it to a file, exchange it with a friend for signing, and then you can load back the completed coin join transaction. Let's have a try with Lightning now. So you've got to come across to the channels tab and we start by trying to create a new channel. Electrum warns us that this is experimental, so you need to be careful trying to use this. Next, we have to pre-fund a Lightning channel with some actual Bitcoin we already have. So this is on testnet, so I'm just using my test Bitcoin. We have a couple of um, endpoints we can choose from. Note that this one is telling us we need a minimum of 200,000 sats, so let's add 200,000 sats to this channel. Up here we can create a recoverable channel. Right, let's click OK and proceed. We need to choose the fee we want to pay again, so I'll say let's go through within five blocks for our wallet password again. Now the channel commences opening and it is now established. We can double click on our new channel and look at details about it. If we right click we've got various options to copy transactions, freeze it, close the transaction or export it for backup. In the lecture making a payment on the Lightning Network is very similar to doing a payment on Mainnet, we won't cover that off. When you're done with a Lightning channel you can come here and go close. Cooperative close is the friendly way, that's where both parties agree to close the channel. You can also force close if one party won't agree and then there's a more invasive closing. So we'll just do a normal cooperative close. Time to score Electrum and put it on the leaderboard. Let's start with cross-platform support. There are Windows, Linux, Mac and Android versions, but there is no Apple iOS version such as for iPhone or iPad. So it scores 8 out of 10 for cross-platform support. It has very good network support. You can run it against a custom node, it supports testnet, it supports lightning, and I'm giving it a bonus point because it also supports a custom Electrum server, which it gives extra functionality. For security, it supports self-custody. It's a Bitcoin-only wallet. It is a hot wallet, but it also supports hardware wallets, so it can be a cold wallet. It allows you to have multiple addresses and support rotation. It's open source. It supports CoinJoin, although it's a little bit tricky, and it supports multi-sig. I haven't scored it any bonus points in security, but if the coin join support maybe was a little bit easier in the web interface then uh, I could have scored an extra point there. For wallet portability it scores three points for being able to import a BIP39 address but it's not able to export a BIP39 address which makes it just that much trickier if you wish to use a different wallet. It can import private keys but there's no other special things regarding Electrum to do with being able to move away from Electrum to, to assist you to move to a different wallet so no bonus points in this Area. Under fee control, it lets you manually specify these fees. It provides guidance, so you can see how much fee would I have to spend to be able to make this happen in two blocks or five blocks. The replace by fee mechanism for bumping a transaction so it happens quicker, it was nice and easy to use. It does support child pays for parent. I personally found it was quite a few more steps and I think it could be improved in this space. But overall I thought the GUI provided a good level of control over fees, so I've scored it a bonus point in this area. So considering all of these things, Electrum scores an average of 8 out of 10 it currently leads the leaderboard. I hope you found that useful. 
Hopefully in another two weeks, I'll be reviewing another Bitcoin wallet and adding it to the Bitcoin wallet series. I'm gonna leave some other videos around my head and hopefully one of those will be of interest to you. Thanks for watching.